Three ways to deal with annoying clients. Hi there, I'm Tamara Doris, your real estate coach. And if this is your first video, well, you might be in for a surprise because I don't teach what regular traditional real estate um, coaches teach. If you followed my books and my videos and you're in my private Facebook group, then you kind of know my perspective is different than a lot of top producers. And that's okay. Variety is the spice of life, right? But a lot of the things I teach and I talk about don't necessarily sit well with all agents. And it's because I come from a softer side of sales and I see the, the psychological and the spiritual side of things. Okay, so in today's topic, we're going to deal with three things, three ways to deal with annoying clients. And I think that this is something we can all relate to. The first way is practical and preventative. The second way is more metaphysical and um, self-exploratory. And the third way is here's how you fix it, okay? So the first way, when I say preventative, what do I mean? Well, I want you to think about the most annoying client that you've ever had. Um, maybe they were the buyer that expected you to go show a property at the drop of a dime, you know, or eight o'clock on a Saturday morning. Or maybe it was the seller who insisted on pricing his home 20% over market and wanted you to cut your commission in half. So we all know what those clients are like, right? So when you think about that particular client, I want you to ask yourself, what were the warning signs, right? I mean, I just gave you two. Those were two warning signs. Now, what I'm getting at here is when we calm down our busy brain and we're a little bit grounded, we see signs. That's our intuition talking to us, saying, mm, this client might not be the best right here. But what happens in real estate, in any commission-based industry, is we get into scarcity mode. And then we're in survival mode and we're like, I got to get a client. I got to get a client. And so any client is better than our ideal client. But here's what I'm telling you. It is not worth the price you will have to pay because the price you will have to pay is your sanity and the sanity that you will, you will have upset is going to repel other prospects who are more ideal for you because you're in stress mode over this one client that you probably shouldn't have connected with, that you probably shouldn't have signed with. Does that make sense? So the first thing is to really pay attention, be present, pay attention to those little niggling signs you get in the back of your mind or in your gut. And you're like, I don't know if this is a good client for me. Now, one of the first things I have my clients do when they come into the magnetic marketing program is make a list of their ideal client. Does it, do they check all the boxes? If they don't check all the boxes, they're probably not for you. So when you have this feeling that someone is not a right fit, you have to really, really be honest with yourself. Do you want a business that's run on stress or do you want a business that's run on fun and, and trust and joy, right? So that's the first thing. When you have already done it though, You've already signed this person and now they're calling you and leaving you 55 voicemails because you didn't call them back in the first three minutes. You have to look at yourself. This is part two, the inner exploratory ex exploration part. What I mean by that, and a lot of agents can get put off by this because, and a lot of humans in general, but listen, we live in a universe that is reflecting everything in our inner landscape into our outer environment. Quantum physics proves this and neuroscience backs it up. So I'm not just making this up. I'm not being woo woo. I'm a little woo woo. The point being that I'm not making this up, that it's very, very true that everything we experience starts in here. So we have to use these opportunities with annoying clients to ask ourselves, where am I being pushy? Where am I being annoying? Or, you know, where am I being untrusting, right? These are all the qualities that, that are, our um, clients who drive us crazy, the triggers that they do to us. And this can happen with other agents too, or lenders or whatever. So you have to ask yourself what the trigger is, and then you have to explore it. And I always say, first, get it out of your system, right? If you're all stressed out, you can't think creatively. We already know that when you're stressed out, your prefrontal cortex shrinks by 80%. That's a lot. So you can't think creatively. But once you have the trigger out of your system, Maybe it's after the deal's done. I don't know. But after it's out of your system, 
sit down with a notepad or a journal and ask yourself some questions. What about this client drove me crazy? What were those traits? Do I have those traits? Where do I possibly exhibit those traits? Or where should I have more traits like that? Sometimes we can be triggered by things that, that we see in others that we wish we had in ourselves. Like maybe someone who speaks in public a lot and you're like, oh, they're so annoying. But maybe it's because you wish you could speak in public. And I know this is like probably a, a little bit delicate and sensitive for some people. But just bear with me because I'm talking the truth, right? I'm not trying to steer you the wrong way here. Okay, so ask yourself these questions. Another thing to ask yourself is what lesson is in this for me? And I'm going to tell you what, a lot of the times the lesson's going to be back to number one. You should have listened to that, that feeling, that intuition, that little voice that said, don't take this client. Okay, so, so if nothing else that you get out of it, besides a hard one commission, if you get that right, is just the fact that you recognize, I didn't listen to my inner voice, which was number one. So, so that's a good thing, right? But again, the second part is really analyzing what is it about this client that triggers you? Another thing I'll have my clients do is say, who does this remind you of in your past? Does it remind you of someone? Maybe an ex-husband, maybe, you know, a, a former employer, your brother. Who does this remind you of? Because what we have to remember, and this is the hardest thing I think that my clients deal with, is when someone in their external life, and, and that can be family, it can be a spouse, it can be a client, it can be anyone, but someone in your external life is driving you crazy, 99% of the time it has nothing to do with that person. And nobody wants to hear it, but I'm speaking the truth has nothing to do with that person. It has to do with what that person triggered in you that was already there to get triggered in the first place. Really think on that for a minute, okay? Number three, the third thing is now we've got to fix it. Now we're, we're you know, halfway through an escrow or a settlement and we've got to deal with this client and they're driving us bananas and we've done part one and part two. You know what we're going to do for part three? We're going to bless them. This is not super metaphysical, send them white light. Mm -mm. We're going to bless them from our heart. Listen, nearly all religions, and I've studied theology for many years, nearly all religions talk about sending love and forgiveness, right? And compassion. I'm going to tell you that one of the fastest, quickest ways that you can solve any dilemma in your life, especially when it has to do with conflict with another person, is to send them love, to send them, to send them compassion and to bless them, right? Because forgiveness is one thing. I forgive you. You're a jerk. I forgive you. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm, I'm going deeper. I'm talking about bless them, bless them. I bless this person. I wish them well. I hope they have prosperity and great health and really mean it. And I'm telling you the energetics, which science still has not exactly pinpointed. I mean, there's a lot of theory and I have my own theories, but this isn't about that. This is what we know for a fact that, that when you bless someone in that manner, even if you don't call it that word, but if you bless someone and you send them intentions for good things, everything dissolves inside of you. It's kind of like, um, there's a great book called uh, Letting Go by Dr. David Hawkins. It's a very long book. I think the audible is 12 hours, but it's a really good book. Uh, but basically, in a nutshell, you don't even have to read it if you just get the concept. Let it go. Just let it go, right? Like in the in the movie Frozen. Let it go. Let it go. That's all we have to do is let it go. Easier said than done, Tamara. I get that. But blessing is not as difficult as letting it go, right? Blessing is, I'll give you an example from my own life. There was a person who is a distant family member who kind of drives me crazy sometimes and did something that I thought was really out of line, inappropriate. Doesn't matter if I'm right or if I'm not. I did exactly what I'm telling you. I looked at the trigger and I'm like, okay, what is this reminding me of? Is it making me feel out of control? What is it? You know, and I went through that little journal activity and then I said, I'm just going to bless her. I'm just going to bless her. And I blessed her and I wished her well. And I sent, um, you know, good, good energy towards her. It took me one or two minutes and literally the next day, she contacted me and apologized. That's never happened before. And I've known her a long time. So this is an example of what we can do with those clients um, or coworkers or, you know, other agents, whatever, bless them, 
it 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 beats it beats just about anything else you can think of you know i have a whole section in our modules for magnetic marketing that deals with communications and we talk about this all the time that goes more pragmatic and practical but if you don't incorporate the metaphysical and remember metaphysical does not mean woo woo it means above physics what physics has not yet scientifically empirically proven okay when we don't look at things from the whole realm we're not seeing the whole picture we're seeing this like a little limited view. Now, speaking of, if you haven't watched my free class, there's links below. Please do that. And if you watched that and you thought it was okay and you think I'm pretty cool, then my $27 class has like an hour and 15 minute video on, on all the inner stuff. Then it has another 45 minute video on, um, on lead generation, attractor factor. And then it has another 45 minute video on what we're talking about here dealing with objections. Well, not really what we're dealing with here, but kind of a facet of that. Okay. And it's only $27. I'm going to tell you what, I am so confident that that, that class will help you that if it doesn't, you let me know. And not only will I give you your $27 back, I will give you three extra dollars. I will round it up to 30. That's what I will do. I will tip you and I will not ask any questions. If I'm not, if I'm not your cup of tea, then I don't want your money. Okay. So that's how I roll. Anyway, hope you subscribe. Hope you like this. Hope it's helpful. And I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you for watching.